dawn before most of Chicago has stirred, a group of people leave their homes for the office. The destination, 222 Riverside, Union Station, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. They are the commodities traders. a gambling den, or even the stock exchange. This is business as usual at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, and the people who play here play what is probably the highest risk game in the country. At 39, Jack Sanders, the chairman of the board of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. His rise has been called meteoric by his peers. At 47, Maury Kravitz has traded 10 times the gold owned by the United States government, more gold than anyone else in this country. Marshall Wright is an architect, engineer, inventor, and five-year trader, a co-founder of a new corporation, SKW. Beverly Daniels is the only woman to build her own commodities corporation. She built it here in Southfield. These people live and breathe one of the fastest growing money-making industries in the country. They trade live cattle, pork bellies, lumber, foreign currency, silver, and gold. Delivery, the future. They are survivors in a market where 80% who trade lose their money. A good day nets as much as $150,000. A bad day, they can lose that much. There's a lot of rags to riches stories in this business, and there's a lot of riches to rag stories, and there are more rags to riches, riches to rags, rags to riches, riches to rags, which means that a lot of professionals in this business go up and down the ladder uh, quite a bit and to large amounts of money. There are people on the floor who probably swing maybe uh, $200,000 a day, a quarter of a million dollars a day, and there, I have known of instances down there where people have made upwards of, say, a million dollars in one day. There was a young man, and this sounds like a limerick, but it's not going to be, who started uh, trading on the Mid-American Exchange with only $500. Uh, about uh, when, when gold and silver were uh, low. And in a matter of five months, he had $25 million. Survival here demands a keen intellect, stores of knowledge, a feel for the market, and the ability to balance one's fear with one's greed. Marshall Wright is one of 1,300 men and women who own privileges in this exclusive club. And the cost of a membership, right around a quarter of a million dollars. But what does that membership really mean? We'll find out tomorrow in my next report. Deborah Conklin, News 4, Detroit. Mercantile Exchange is one of the largest commodities exchanges in the United States, and it's expanding. Last year, the total number of contracts traded was up 10%, and the year before that, 31.5%. Commodity trading in all U.S. exchanges topped 90 million contracts last year, double the number traded just three years ago. That incredible growth has some experts worried. They say the small investor, who really can't afford to lose, is footing the bill. And while that may be true, traders insist the futures market is not meant for everyone. Maury Kravitz, the number one gold trader in the country. So it requires not just a financial profile, and certainly a man who is out of work, or a man who is looking to educate his children, or a person who is on a very fixed income and has identifiable uh, budgetary problems, this is not the activity for him. He must go elsewhere. If the small investor is lured into the market, this is the reason why. He can invest on margin or deposit. For example, an investment of, say, $1,500 entitles you to the profits of the sale of $1 million in U.S. Treasury bills. You are also responsible for the losses. And it takes only a matter of seconds. Commodity trading. A typical trade can start at home in Detroit. You phone in an order which gets hotlined to the floor of the Merck. 
There, a runner hurries it to the pit. He or she hands it to a member or trader. A trader wears a red coat, or black, or orange, anything that sets him apart from the crowd. He trades by open outcry and hand signals. He sells, hands out. He buys, hands in. In the pit, he's known by his trading name. Sage, farm, hat, golf, Rio, kid, zoo. The results must balance at the end of the day. If not, in come the green coats. They are the out-trade clerks. They settle disputes between traders where a simple mistake can cost $30,000. Trade complete, the blue coats employed by the exchange punch it into the computer. It hits the big board immediately, as well as the ticker tapes in offices all over the country. The traders of the commodities, gold, T-bill, lumber, cattle, pork bellies, describe themselves as true individualists, as survivors in the survival of the fittest game. It's murderous. The men are much larger and they're very aggressive. We fight just like they do, but they're physically much larger and you get pushed and shoved. Can you be as successful though? Can you be as effective? Absolutely. You, you cannot expose your vulnerability in the pit. As soon as somebody senses you're vulnerable, as soon as you're a even though you're a lion of the jungle, if you're sick and you're dying, another lion or another animal is going to sense it immediately. It's going to kill you. Same thing happens there. Trading at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange lasts from 7.30 in the morning till 1.45 in the afternoon. After that, the trader must leave the floor, but he seldom leaves it behind. Tomorrow, Marshall Wright, After Hours. Deborah Conklin, News 4, Detroit. And the people who play here are money masters, not because they win all the time, but because they can win big and lose big and still come back for more. A five-year commodity veteran, Marshall Wright, leads a good life now. Not that it hasn't always been good, it's just a bit more comfortable these days. Once a successful architect, he designed and constructs the apartment he shares with his wife, Andre. Working with his hands is one way he relaxes from the hours in the pits, where a good day can mean twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, and a bad day hurts. The first sixty days I was on the floor, I never had a losing day, and I just, you know, was just doing really good. On the sixty-first day or so, in three days, from the 61st day to the 64th day, I lost everything I made in 60 days, plus three times that amount in just three more days. What is it like at night when you lose? What does that feel like? It's an emotion. It's a tremendous emotion that just goes through every fiber of you, and you, and you lay there awake all night, and you say, why? You ask yourself, why? But for the successful trader, losing is incorporated into the overall win. Five years now, I've never ever once had one morning where I just couldn't wait to get down there. I mean, I go down there every day, and I love it. No, he never brings his work home. He always called me and say, well, I'm going to play racquetball tonight. And I say, oh, thank God. <laughs> He's going to beat the ball instead of me, you know. He get all his frustration out, and then he comes home, and my little pieces that I have at home. <laughs> Always an intense competitor, Marshall continues to play this game like his life depended on his winning. It doesn't. He just plays that way all the time. But you have to have a game. If you don't have a game, you go home, you're all pinned up, you got everything tied up in you and you're, and you're on, you know, you're strung up. What are some of the other things that guys do to get the uh, tension out of their system? You know, some of them drink, some of them, uh, you know, play with the girls, some guys sail, you know, some, everything. But uh, right. for me, it's got to be physical exercise.
Like all veteran traders, Marshall leads the good life, but it's not easy street. The traders pay in pressure with ulcers and prematurely gray hair. While we may know what tomorrow will bring, they never do, because only the markets will tell. This is the free enterprise. Most of the successes in this industry are white, Jewish, and male. In fact, only 50 of the 1,300 traders here are women. But in Detroit, there's a commodities corporation president who is different. She is black. We'll meet her tomorrow on my report. Deborah Conklin, News 4, Detroit. Not everyone who works in the commodities market goes to work in Chicago. Some traders have offices in Detroit, like the very successful Beverly Daniel. When Beverly Daniel gets up for work, she means it. She's ready. And baby, you ain't seen the best of her yet. To date, she's the only woman in the United States to start her own commodity corporation. Before getting hooked by the fast lane, she practiced law in Detroit and Ann Arbor, and now, five years into commodities, she's a success, with the 14-karat gold wheels to prove it. One thing you got to feel is you know, that gold, uh, what you call the you know, that uh, you can feel exactly it. Uh... You're highly visible in your industry, aren't you? Well, yes, <laughs> I am, I guess. Uh, there are very few women in the industry. And uh, at this point, uh, I am the only black woman who owns a company in the industry. You know, in this industry, uh, if you display some degree of competence, nobody really notices. Uh, things move so fast that nobody really notices whether you're a woman or black or whatever because we're all concerned about trying to, to work this market to make money with it. Five years ago, she successfully invested her own capital. Within a few months, she was trading for a friend, and then she started her own business with one other woman as secretary. Today, the payroll includes some 60 people. In five years, she's seen it all. The clients who uh, uh, have made, uh, if I can be a Webster's Dictionary for a minute, the humongous amounts of money trading in commodities. I, I have a client who has gone from five digits to the very, very large uh, millions. Have you ever lost everything? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. Like some of her counterparts in Chicago, she has discovered the business is not just about making money, but about staying in the game. My entire well-being and livelihood is, is a, one big risk. I call it living on the edge, but it makes life uh, very, very exciting. That excitement entices people from all walks of life. I was a counselor for youth development. I also raise Arabian show horses. I sold clothing, retail clothing. I taught Wendy Ward and a few different charm schools. In an uncanny way, it seems Beverly Daniel was born for the market. By her own admission, she has what it takes. Well, I think you have to uh, be a little bit out of touch with reality. <laughs> Every day, she and the other traders in the pits of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange see what's happening to our commodities six months before we feel it. Tomorrow, their vision and advice. Uh, a good basic investment for anybody. Commodity trading, that is, should be a small part of the trade, especially. It's an adverse situation. I'm talking about survival. Deborah Conklin, News 4 tonight.